Welcome to Backwater Casting. I'm your host, Rick Green. Today we're fishing just outside of Fredericton, New Brunswick with our guest, Zach Phillips. Zach's a Fredericton boy, he's a professional hockey player, and he's currently playing hockey in Europe. We'll chat with Zach and learn a little bit about what it's like to have a career in hockey in Europe. Just try a couple of different things, see if we can get something going. Water's warm, 76 degrees. Yeah, Rick, when the water is this warm, um, where do you usually find that the bass kind of hang out when it's when it's like this? So it's really hard to say. Like the bass are a sunfish. Warmer water yeah. should speed their metabolism up because they're cold blooded. Right. And I mean, what better place to feed up than in these big weed flats? Yeah. And I've had more luck for bass on this lake shallow than I have in the real deep holes because if we saw that massive school of perch there in the yeah. deep hole this morning on the way across, but we didn't mark any big fish in around them. Right. Which is weird because you would think with all that food there that they, they would just all be just there. Be falling because there, right was behind them. Eat, there was enough to eat there for the whole year for them. Yeah, exactly. Fighting like a pickerel. Yeah. Tis a pickerel. Oh, there's, yeah, <laughs> they're slippery. That's got a small split shot on it. Just toss it right into those pads. Sounds good. That's fairly weedless. Okay. So with that, throw it, when you throw it in there, yeah. give it a couple of seconds to, to drop. sink and just very, very slowly reel it along so it stays on the bottom. Okay. Don't be afraid to throw it right in the middle of them. Fights like a pickerel. Yeah. It is a pickerel, holy <laughs> smokes. Imagine that. Okay. Come on to Papa. There you go, buddy. Yeah. There's definitely some pickerel. You didn't here. know the bass were supposed to be. Boy, she's jumping. I know, eh? Oh, holy smokes. You get up here. There you go. So we've been messing with something a little new for me, not a new bait, but this thing's called an underspin. It's got a little blade on the bottom and fishing it with a jackal rhythm wave swim bait. So through the nose, and straight down the middle as you can get it, and then pop the hook out. Just like that. So that's gonna come through the water, swimming, and that works great even by itself, and that little bit extra flash right there is gonna be the ticket. That pickerel just destroyed the one I had on there, so. Anyway, just something new I've been messing with this year. Trying to catch up to them. Another pickerel. Another pickerel. A lot of them in here. Yeah. Oh, this is nothing like what it was. Really? They, oh, you you couldn't get a cast in. Really? Yeah. And some of them were tanks, like four pounds. Yeah. Hey, give me that back. <laughs> so yeah. here's an alternate bait. That's my all-time most money-winning tournament tube right there. That one there? Yeah, that one right there. All right. So it has, so you can just keep that back there too if you want. Yeah, well, it's an exposed hook as opposed to the one that you got. Yeah, so I gotta be a little more careful with it? Well, no, you just, just so you know, it'll yeah. catch it'll catch some grass and stuff. Okay. But it, the, between the two of them, one of them should work over here as we get yeah. over. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Perch? A little perch, yeah. 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 Now in the, in the kids' tournament, that's a good perch. Yeah. Yeah, that's. That's not a little perch. No. Everything's relative. Yeah, we'll do a multi-species show. Some I've seen a lot of this year that I don't remember okay. seeing here before. Not in this lake, but on the river is uh, sunfish. We've caught sunfish on uh, baits that we don't, that we would normally, you would, well, you would just wouldn't catch them. Right. And you'll see, you would see a bunch of them coming in and we just haven't seen that many as a rule. Lots of them this year. Really? Bass. Nice. At least we're catching fish. 
There might have been another one over there. I would toss over that way. Decent, nice fish. Nice fish. Nope. Fooled them on the spinner rig. So this guy come up and boiled right in front of us. He was being quite cheeky, so we did a visitation on him. <laughs> Little brown he is. Not any real distinct markings or anything on him. Poof. Nice. That doesn't. Oh, he's it's a bat. Oh, he's oh. a dirty dog. Yeah. So that is that's a baby pickerel. What the? And that's a baby pickerel. That bass had that, and I hooked the pickerel in his mouth, and he got off. Huh. So that's uh, that's pretty amazing that he was still eating. Oh, that's cool. Pretty crazy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Another pickerel. Yeah, another pickerel. I'm definitely getting some pickerel today. Yeah. Get in here, you little... Careful with the leader, it's only 10 pounds, I think. Okay. That'll quit moving around. There you go. Yeah. First one. He, yeah, he almost landed in the boat. That was funny. <laughs> Pretty good one too. <laughs> yeah, he smacked that. So somebody's caught him before. Yeah, he's been caught before. He's got a little mark on him. I'll try to get that out of there as nicely as I can. There we go. Yeah. That was a surprise. That's just a case of we're trying to get to our next spot. And historically, I don't catch anything here, but we've been you know, throwing moving baits as we go, and all of a sudden he just come right out of there and smacked it. Well, welcome addition to the boat. <laughs> exactly. Big well, perch. Our perch. Big old perch. Get in here. That's a pretty big perch. As far as perches go. Another pick roll. I've seen it twice now. Yeah. Yeah, he was clear of the water. Okay, come here, come here. There we go. There you go. Let it go. I had that out and he's got it again. There we go. Just a little guy. Yeah. Just very distinct chain pattern, like always. So Rick, can you explain to me about toad bait fishing? So that's basically what it is. It's got two little feet and they, they just come across the water like that and they just kind of burble and gurgle along. Yeah. So this is the technique, nice and simple. Okay. As far as you can throw it, and as soon as that hits the water, you start reeling, you keep it up top, just like that. So that's, that is toad fishing right there. All right. Oh, that's a bass. Is it a bass? Yeah. Cool. No, it's pickerel. It's gonna be a pickerel. It's a bass. It's a bass. It is a bass. Yeah. Cool. Nice bass too, I yeah, think. Yeah, I think it's all right. Yeah. Get up here, buddy. Yeah, you're straight braid there, so you're a lot safer. Yeah. Here, I'm gonna do a picture. We haven't been getting any pictures. Perfect. Can't can't have a website with no pictures. That's pretty cool. Yes. No mistake when you get a top water and uh, fish comes up and grabs it. It's pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Love getting them on top on that toad. Yeah, it's, it's nice with those because you watch the whole thing happen. You're just looking at it and all of a sudden it's poof. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. Yeah. On the board, geez. Yeah, the neat thing about this is that you, you got a big hook, which I, I mean, a single big hook is the best thing ever. So that's a five odd hook in there. And I just, I pull that hook down flat and I push the bait ahead a little bit and I let it come back over that point. So you're weedless. Yeah. And then, like I said, what just happened there, eh? You just watch that fish come right up and smack that thing as you're bringing it across the surface. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see the whole thing happen. The beauty of there. Yeah, top water is fun. Yeah. Any thought for what it is? I think it's a bass. All right, cool. Right up in the shallow water. You're going to love it. And I'm not going to say it's not because the last time I said it wasn't a bass, it yeah. was a bass. That's another yeah. bass. No, another chunk. Nice. 
And it shows you the difference in the bait, because I was in there. I put 10 casts across the back of there. Yeah. He's, he's barely hooked. That's, that's, that's enough. Just barely is enough. Yeah, exactly. There we go. Yeah. A little smaller they than are last dark, one, though. Look how black he is. He is dark. Nice. Perfect. Do you, you must have been away, like, at a really young age, like in your teens, because, uh, you know, you've got quite a history playing hockey. I went away to uh, prep school in the States uh, outside of Boston for three years from grade seven to nine. And then I uh, ended up committing to a university down there, but I've been away from home for so long and um, my rights ended up with the Sea Dogs in St. John. So I uh, thought it'd be better for me to come home for a few years and be close to home. How, how about talking a little bit about that period in your life? Uh, yeah, that was a, a great time in my life. Uh, like I said, it was nice to be closer to home and. Uh, I had family that was able to come to pretty much every game, so uh, we had a good team there. We had a lot of players that are now in the NHL, and like I said, we won the Memorial Cup. Uh, we won two President's Cups, so uh, it was definitely a, you know, one of the highlights of, of my hockey career for sure was those three years spent in St. John with a, a lot of good players and good guys I still uh, keep in touch with today. I'm going on my 10th uh, my year professional now, so it's been uh, quite a ride, but yeah, I've been, I haven't been home for a winter since I was 12 or 13, something like that. Well, it's the first one on the rhythm wave today, and it's a pickerel. <laughs> Whoa. Anyway, it's another little chain pickerel. Welcome back to Backwater Casting. Well, Zach and I are continuing to catch a bunch of fish here on the lake, and we're gonna chat with them a little bit about what it was like to move from the United States to Europe to play hockey. Oh, that's a nice bass. Whoa, Is it? Ho, ho. he could come right up out of the water. Now, isn't that funny? We fished all the way across that line coming in and yeah. didn't catch anything, and here we are. Come on, bud. A little rhythm wave swim bait. He liked that. Up. There you go, buddy. I guess we should get a picture. So I got one. He's, he feels like a couple of pounds. He's not that long, but he's got a big girth on him. He's, he's got a, he's, they've been eaten up. I mean, they probably spawned in here over a month ago. So these fish, we shouldn't see any real skinny I was right on the edge of those rocks. Yeah, that's where mine came off of too. Any thoughts? I think it's a bass, oh, yeah. Oh, yes sir, it's a bass. Nice bass too. Yeah. Get over here, buddy. Get in here. There we go. Got him. Yes, sir. Yeah. So it makes you wonder if that was a bass I had coming after me too, right off the rocks. Like that. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. I got pictures already. I'm fast. <laughs> Perfect. I got pictures when you're getting them off. I thought I threw it right on top of the rock, to be honest, but uh, I stopped it just a little bit before, and uh, yeah, it came right off those big rocks in there. The dead's right in front of it, and the second it hit the water, it, it grabbed it, and it was, yeah, it was a good one. Another dark one. So where'd you go after you played in St. John? I mean, you guys had a great, great time down there, great team. So where'd you go next? Uh, so yeah, after uh, St. John, I was lucky enough to get drafted um, to Minnesota. And uh, I spent some summers there training and stuff like that. Um, and then turned pro uh, when I turned 20, I, we, I moved to Houston. And uh, that was the start of my pro career there with uh, Minnesota's farm team. Um, played there for a few years and then uh, ended up getting traded to Boston. So I played a year in Providence, a year and a half in Providence with, uh, with their AHL team. And then... Uh, after the four years here, I decided I wanted to see what it was like over in Europe, so um, made the switch over to there, and now I'm going into my sixth year uh, playing over across the sea. So it's, uh, it's been good so far for me, and, and I'm still enjoying it, so I'm gonna keep going as long as I can. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, come on up. Up you go. Oh. Yeah, it's funny, eh? They chase it and smack it right beside the boat. I don't yeah. know if they think it's gonna get away on them or... Okay, stop, 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 stop. 
guess the teeth can't really hurt you if you're holding on to them. Boy, see, got that. He wasn't coming off. There we go. Easier with my pliers than with my fingers. Anyway, no real big ones yet today, though. Lots of pickerel around, but not no yeah. monsters. I am surprised about the pickerel that we're not seeing any real big ones because there used to be some dandies in here. That's the same one that came for it three times. Yeah. You want to eat, I guess. Yeah, he's hungry. Uh, those pliers up there. Here, yeah. There we go. Yeah, that's a, that's one of the bigger pickerel for today. Yeah, yeah, he came at it twice before, and I just think don't think I had the hook in properly, so Rick helped me out there, and then uh, he came back for a third time, and I finally got him. So he was hungry. So you said after uh, Houston, you decided to go and see Europe. How did that work out playing the European Hockey League? It was different for sure. Um, it was my first time ever in Europe. I flew over there and uh, Sweden was the first place I went and I lived in a town of only four or five thousand people so it was definitely uh, definitely a change. The hockey's a much different style but um, I think it fits my game a lot more so overall I've been pretty pretty happy with it. Uh, I've been to five different countries now and um, you know really just experiencing life over there and it's uh, everything's worked out so far so so I'm pretty happy with uh, the decision I made to, to move over there. Same thing, same size pickerel exactly. Must have been a good year class for them back then. I don't know how old that guy would be, but that must have been a good year class. There are lots of them. Yeah. Come here, buddy. We wouldn't win a pickerel tournament with you. <laughs> okay, there you go. We got a big big scar across his back. Something's had a hold of him. I'm gonna get net that probably from the sound of it. I think this is a pretty good one. Yeah, it sounded it coming down your side of you here. I'm pretty excited. I think it's a good one. I think it is too. At least we're not moving, you're not got the boat pulling you. Yeah. You're on spot lock. Oh well, you're definitely pulling like a big bass. Yeah. Hard looking into that glare. Oh, boys, he went under. God. Yeah. That's a pretty good one. That's a good one right there, yeah. Yeah. Another pitcher fish. Oh, yeah. He felt like a good one. And yeah. uh, Rick oh, was no, just saying a second you. before, yeah, he hit it hard. This is, uh, I've been looking for a pretty good bass all day, so there's the one. All right. Yeah, I hardly said the words. I know, he you barely got it in your mouth, and then there he was. Yeah, I heard that one come up, man. That was a good fish, and he smashed that thing. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, caught on the blue fox. Rick's been talking about it all day, and it uh, finally paid off there. So, like I said, I, he hit hard. I thought I was stuck on bottom for a second, and then I felt it move. So, that was a, it was a good one. Those little blue foxes, it's such a simple bait. I mean, it's just an outstanding little fish catcher. Welcome back to Backwater Casting. Well, as we wrap the show up, we're gonna keep on fishing and we're gonna learn a little bit about the difference in professional hockey between North America and Europe. Oh yeah, nice small ones, yes sir. Yes sir. Mr. Bass. I said we had a little bit of grass. Up. That's a good one. Yeah. Nice. Mid two, probably. Well, frankly, I, I've never been to Europe. It's all the things I'd like to do sometimes, so I kind of envy that, but um, I picture a cultural language difference uh, when you go over there, especially as you get into places like Poland. And is, is that what, what you encountered? Yeah, it's, uh, it's funny that you mentioned Poland, actually. This year, um, this past year over there was the first time I've had a, a coach that uh, couldn't speak English at all. So that was definitely an experience. Um, there was a few guys on the team that uh, had some pretty good English that could uh, translate for me after meetings and stuff like that. But uh, it's pretty tough late in games when you're trying to design a play or something to get a late goal and um, you really have no idea what the coach is telling you on the bench so uh, that was a little bit different but uh, we found a way to, to work through it and uh, we ended up having a pretty good year so. Golly. 
It's not. I think it's just it's a it's a fish and a bunch of grass. Yeah, you went right down into it. It's even smaller than the last one. Okay, 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 okay. Jeez, you're gonna destroy my spinnerbait. I get. I mean, in a way, I was gonna say we don't really think about hockey, but in Europe, but man, I guess when you look at the Olympic teams and stuff, they got it. So what's the fan base like over there? Yeah, and there's definitely some uh, some big fan bases over there too that might uh, people might not know. Uh, I played in Nottingham in England for a year, and we had a stadium I think of 6,000 people, and we'd easily get 5,500 to pretty much every game. So um, they might not be as knowledgeable um, about the game and stuff like that as back here in North America, but they're definitely passionate, and it's a it's a pretty fun crowd to play in front of. There's a whole bunch of pickerel up here. Boys, this is not what we were looking for. Oh, geez, that, I almost thought there was a bass following him in. That's a better pickerel right there. Yeah, I thought there was a bass behind him. Yeah, bigger. Okay, 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 okay. Here we go. Let's go, buds. There we go. Yeah. Decent one. There you go, bud. Well, Zach, the question has to be asked. With all the time that you spend in Europe, do you ever go fishing? Uh, yeah, uh, I've been fortunate on a couple of the teams at least. Uh, there's been some guys that also enjoy fishing that have taken me out over there. So I think I've gone four times while I've been over there, twice in Hungary and twice in Poland. Um, Every time has been for carp. It's definitely a different technique over there, but always interesting to see the different way that people fish, and uh, I've been lucky enough to catch a few, so um, yeah, every time I get a chance to go fishing, I'm going to take it, so it's been good so far. Look at him go, too, right? He's going on, trying to go all the way around the boat. Yes, sir. Boys. Tell you what, boys, you slam one of those on a spinnerbait. It's an impact. It's hard to see down in that light on this side. There's so much glare on the water. Oh, that's a nice fish. Yeah, come on. That's a nice fish. Yeah, chunk. None of them are real big. I mean, these are just nice, fun fish, but they're, we're not seeing any, other than that one that come off there earlier today, we haven't seen a real big fish. Zach, it was, it was great fun having you out there today. Crazy day, hot, yeah. windy, pickerel. We learned not to lip them. Yeah. Like, it was an interesting day. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking after today, you'd probably be glad to hit the rink tonight and get uh, on some ice. Exactly, cool down a little bit. But no, yeah. thank you very much for having me out. I appreciate uh, it. It was a good day. It was a pleasure, yeah. Caught some fish and had a good day. It's yeah. good. All fun. Great. It's fishing. Exactly. Right? It's all fishing. Say hello to your grandfather for me. I will for sure.